Can you hear me? Okay, great. Welcome. It's so nice to see faces, like real, real faces. I think the very last time when I gave presentation live was back in 2019, so this is very special for me. So thank you so much that I can share this with you. Um, I've been asked to talk about our accelerator program, the way we um, help startups to get to the next stage of their development, and how do we do, the, do this, what are the methods that we're using. So this is why uh, I am here today, and I will talk about Hess Venture Lab and our program called Reactor Startup Accelerator Program. My name is Love. I am project manager at Hess Venture Lab. So at Hess Venture Lab, uh, Hess Venture Lab is a community built by many, by many uh, different healthcare stakeholders, and it is backed by EIT Health. In practice, it means that Health Venture Lab, HVL, is a nonprofit, and it has a great network of partners uh, who contribute to the success of the program, and the program itself is financed by EIT Health, which is part of the European Union. Uh, the mission of Health Venture Lab is to support European healthcare startups. We focus on healthcare only, on the healthcare field. So it's not a general accelerator program that you have to imagine, but uh, we work with teams who are bringing innovation in the field of life sciences or uh, digital health. It may be, for example, medical imaging or um, hospital workflow optimization, to give you a couple of examples. So the goal is to enable smooth commercialization of healthcare innovation within Europe, and this is what we do. Um, so let's start here. What type of startups can apply to the program? So this is a specialty in our case that this accelerator is industry specific. Uh, but furthermore, any teams who are in um, either early stage companies or either growth stage companies can uh, join the program because we offer them a personalized track. So meaning that part of the, the program is always tailored for the startup's special needs, and we provide them uh, with uh, that kind of industry know-how and expertise. Couple of examples. So we have accelerated more than 60, uh, 96 uh, startups. We are operating since 2018, so this is the fifth year. So uh, in average, we usually have around 19 to 15 teams in each of the batch uh, since 2018. There have been many changes since then, but I'm also going to highlight those so you can have a clear vision of that. Uh, there are 20 plus countries represented in our program, so anyone who, is, who has a working MVP, are you familiar with the term minimal viable product? Yes, okay, good. So they must have a working MVP and they must be incorporated in one of the European countries. They may be either early stage or growth stage companies, but they must be working in the field of life sciences or digital health. Yes, a question. European, European as Europe. The, this is what I mean by that, yeah. It's, it's not just EU, yeah. Uh, so, a couple of examples of what type of companies do we have here. For example, Lightspace, uh, a company incorporated in Latvia, they are working on advanced optics for surgery. Or Cardiomatrix, who, are, who is a, a Polish uh, startup, they are working on predicting ECG analysis and recently raised 3.2 million euros uh, to bring their um, solution to the market. Another example uh, comes from Romania, a company called Xvision. They have, they have progressed insanely a lot in the last couple of years, uh, mainly meaning um, international scale up and very rapid growth. Maybe I'll just give a minute uh, for the latecomers to feel free to join your spot so you don't have to sneak in, just take your seat comfortably. No. 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 Yes, I will touch on upon that just a second.
Ready? Okay. So, just a little wrap up. I'm, so, I'm, I'm introducing you a startup accelerator program that we are working. Uh, our organization is called Health Venture Lab, and the program it is called Reactor. So we help European healthcare startups to reach the next stage of their development. This is what we do. And now I'm just explaining you the methods of how we are doing it, what are the, the ways that we can successfully accelerate a startup, and what are the ways that are not working. So here are yeah, some of the startups uh, that uh, I just highlighted. But it is important to mention that we can divide uh, the cohort into multiple categories. So there are uh, teams who bring innovation uh, about a medical device. There are others who are working in the field of AI or big data, or it may be uh, in medical imaging. So it, they are both hardware and software companies, so they vary not only in the field that they are innovating in, but also in terms of development. So there are always some teams in our batch who are looking to find their product market fit, who are looking to find their first seed round. But the other half of the batch uh, consists of more growth, uh, more mature teams. And um, <clears throat> they face very, very different challenges from those who are in early stages. So they might be ready already for ready for international scale-up or growth or the next round of investment or for partnership building. So what we do at the beginning of all of the programs is that we ask the teams to set their personal goals, what they want to reach by the end of the accelerator. So we make sure that we tailor um, the content to meet those needs and definitely reflect on those issues that uh, they have listed but I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So uh, Reactor 22 is the ongoing program that we are having at the moment. This is the fifth uh, year that we are having this program. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, yes, this is now a completely uh, remote program that we are talking about. So back in 2018 and 19, uh, it was held in one of our uh, biggest uh, partners, a GE Healthcare facility here in Budapest. And just imagine that you are having 16 European teams, or I don't know, 19 European teams from 16 European countries, and they are all flying in and uh, doing this accelerator program together. So it was... It was always a very good feeling to be part of such a community, which has been growing ever since. So in our network and in our community, we do not only uh, value the startups, but obviously those startups who have been part of the accelerator have become alumni, and they are always um, um, appreciated and welcome. But we have lots of experts and mentors and, um, and other partners who also support um, who also support us. The way that I could explain to you um, how do we put together the program, I think this is the very easiest slide that I could put together for you. So I would divide the, the business methodology training into three parts, or the, the methodology into three parts, or three pillars. One of the pillars at the top uh, would be when we provide uh, business methodology training. Here I mean much more kind of a generic uh, training when we are talking about validation, finance, business development, um, regulatory issues, uh, or how to set up a clinical trial and so on. Um, what we offer here is a deep healthcare business expertise and the industry best practices and know-how. The other part of, or the other pillar of that uh, training is the personalized track. Here, under personalized track, I mean three main things. So, teams have the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one consultations, not only with uh, industry experts, who are delegated through our partners, for example, um, Medical University um, of uh, Vuch 
or ISC Business School or uh, Medical University uh, University of Debrecen or um, G Healthcare, for example. So imagine that that. Uh, you are a team, and then you define your challenges at the beginning of the program. And then you get the chance to meet with those experts who can, um, who can address uh, those questions that you listed at the very beginning. So here I mean that you have one-on-one -on -one consultations with mentors, you have one-on-one -on -one consultations with experts, and you have one-on-one -on -one consultations with um, uh, communication trainers as well. It is turned out to be one of the best ways for us to ensure that startups can um, accelerate their businesses. Why is that? So when you think about an accelerator, I think that most of the times what comes to your mind is a general accelerator. When you get tech companies, and yeah, mainly tech companies, I would say, but uh, when we are talking about an industry-specific uh, accelerator, such as healthcare, there are there are so many different things that we have to include into the accelerator itself just because that the field is so different. So think about that. Uh, you would like to make, I don't know, an application for, I don't know, better time management for students at universities. So most probably you can put it together, um, your business idea, just in a couple of weeks maybe. Uh, you can also develop the app in a relatively short amount of time, maybe in-house, or maybe you, um, you get additional help from outside. It doesn't really matter, because at, at the end of the day, uh, you can do it in a rel relatively short amount of time. But what if you start a startup in the healthcare field? You have to think about that, that the product that will be put on the market will be used by humans and what you would like to achieve is to increase the health and the benefit of those who are using the product or service that you are uh, putting out there to the market. So imagine the vast amount of regulations that you have to go through until the time that that product or service can be actually on the market. So what our accelerator is helping you with is that if you are a healthcare startup, we are helping you through the way um, and, uh, and highlighting you all the biggest milestones that you have to think about early on. So f I think that maybe one example um, can explain it very well. We had a team who set their goals at the beginning of the program. So the program is three months long. And the question is, what are your KPIs for the program? And if one of the teams says that I would like to have a signed contract with two hospitals by the end of the program, please help me with that, then we would highlight that it clearly says that you are not well aware of um, the sales cycles within the healthcare field. So what you just set as a goal for yourself is impossible to reach, not because we cannot help you, but because ho hospitals have closed their deals last year already, probably in Q3 or Q4. So um, I think it is crucial uh, to give them that industry-specific knowledge that they can only get here uh, through this accelerator. And um, highlighting the mentors and the experts, these one-on-one sessions, why it is very important, is because I think that you also know that if you are um, doing something for a couple of years, you can easily become an expert in that field. And if you are helping someone else who is very new to that field, many of the things that you know is kind of, you mark it as a trivial knowledge. So you think that it is so basic, so everyone should know it. But it is not for those who have just entered the market. And uh, so putting, um, making these matches where teams have the opportunity to talk with experts, uh, the key is that they can prepare in advance. So they will know that I will have a session with an expert from the regula uh, regulatory background, someone else who is very good at um, using AI in, uh, in uh, healthcare softwares, or someone else who is very good in um, uh, getting into clinical trials, 
and I can prepare all my questions in advance, and I can get my personalized kind of training uh, on top of the first pillar that we offer is that the general methodology that everyone is um, uh, following. And then the third pillar would be the international healthcare uh, startup community. Not only the startup community, but uh, the HVL as a network. So once we have uh, both uh, academia and business partners, and we are also backed with this uh, EIT Health um, that is uh, originated from the European Union, we have um, a great number of experts all working in the same field. So as a startup, you can benefit a lot from that. Yes, here uh, I just wanted to give you um, an example of the agenda, but uh, I think that we will not have time for that. Maybe if we have time, I will jump back. So. I wanted to give you an example about the sprint topics that we have. So how does the accelerator look like? You have to imagine that this accelerator um, consists of four sprints, and each of the sprints are divided into topics. And um, these four sprints are happening in the course of three months. So then the first one uh, started in April, which means that the first one we will finish uh, in mid-June. So this is how long a program is. Uh, on the first week, we are talking about building a healthcare innovation team and validation. After comes the second sprint when we focus on finance and fundraising, after communicating and selling to clients, which includes sales and negotiation techniques. And the third one would be international expansion and scaling up. I think this is also the time when we talk about um, uh, Axis strategy as well. So as we have four sprints, these are the main topics that we cover. And then on the personalized track, then they can choose that from which field of expertise they lack the most and what are they looking for. So then they will be matched with those mentors and experts who can help on top of this uh, business methodology training. Structure of a sprint. So how does a sprint look like? As I said, there are four sprints within the program. And then how a sprint looks like. If you're a startup, this is what is happening right now as everything is completely remote and being held online. You sit into your, in front of your computer, you log in at 9 a.m. to Zoom, and uh, you are having sessions until 1 p.m. And then you repeat the same on Tuesday and on Wednesday and on Thursday and on Friday. So one sprint consists of uh, five days. And we start at 9 a.m. and we finish at 1 p.m. each and every day. The reason behind that is that before, um, we used to have full day, uh, uh, full day long events that were um, that were held offline and what we realized it as that uh, startup well, startups usually do not have obviously money <laughs> at most of the cases but the second thing that they lack the most is time so if you put them into an accelerator program and then you ask them to sacrifice 100 percent of their time they won't be able to make one step closer to their goals to achieve it because it is just impossible to work 24 hours a day. So if they would put all their work into the accelerator, there is nothing left to work on so they cannot achieve any progress. That's why we had to decrease uh, the overall duration of the program and uh, we made it into four hours of very intensive uh, workshops and trainings. So on Monday and Tuesday, we covered the business methodology training. Oh, sorry, a question. Sorry, I was just going to ask if they need the rest of the time for their startup and different things, or for a different job, or studies, or... Mm -hmm. It also depends. Um, as I said, there are early companies and growth stage companies as well. So in many of the early companies, what usually happens is that they cannot guarantee a full-time position for all their employers. So many times they are, for example, university students, but they put, I don't know, five to six hours um, 
um, work into the uh, startup. So if this is the case, then, then yeah. Th does it answer your question? Okay, great. So then on Wednesday, um, we are having panel discussions and entrepreneur talks. The goal here is that what we have covered on day one and day two, business methodology training, we are inviting real, um, real people who are actually doing what we have been talking about in day one and two and ask them to share their own journey. They, they are usually entrepreneurs building amazing biotechnological companies and, and changing regulations within Europe of, um, of um, putting some um, uh, product on the market. So, so th they have achieved great, great things. They are also experts in the field. And then we ask them to share their journey and give some guidance and mentoring and feedback to our current batch. Day four, one of the most exciting programs of all, I mean activities of all, is the expert sessions. So this is a day when we invite a bunch of experts from all of our partners and we make uh, one-on-one -on -one consultations. The way it happens is that, and now I will just jump to the next slide, the way it happens is like this. Experts are having uh, consultations with one team, one expert, one team in breakout room uh, for 40 minutes. And after it comes a two-minute break, um, yeah, evaluation, two minutes break, and then comes the next session. So imagine that for a whole day, for four hours, uh, what you're doing is that you're having private sessions from different experts, from different fields, that you know uh, in advance who you are going to meet with, so that you can list all your questions. Some teams are so eager to max out this opportunity that they divide themselves. I mean, meaning that they say that, um, uh, three of our team members are going to join, so we can be in three separate rooms, so we can meet three different experts at the same time. And of course, there is also, they have the opportunity to do that. So that is Thursday. And after Friday, what we do, and it turned out one of the great methods that we, we, just, we are eager to keep is the advisory board meeting. So what is happening is that as a startup, once you reach the fifth day, it means that you have covered a wide range of topics since day one. Uh, there is a deliverable that you have to work on that is linked to each sprint. And then you have to prepare a presentation about that. First, giving a short, um, a short pitch, yeah, two minutes pitch to the board members. And then after uh, describing and presenting the deliverables that you have been working on uh, throughout the week. The advisory board members are partners, representatives, and experts, and mentors, and trainers um, who listen to your presentation and after give you feedback. What we do here is that we make sure that each of the team has five minutes, strictly five minutes maximum, uh, to present their deliverables and themselves. And after we provide an additional 15 to 20 minutes uh, for the feedback session. And this is um, a deep dive for the teams. So basically just imagine that you are putting yourself out there, you are uh, presenting and uh, uh, showing all the deliverables that you have been working to a bunch of experts, the four or five experts, who are then having shooting you with those questions that you are just trying to avoid. So this is usually what happens, is that uh, sometimes we spend 40 minutes on one team because we get so much into the conversation and everyone is so active, and then by the end, for example, it happened in one of the cases, one of the teams realized that what they are selling as a service could be uh, repackaged and also sold a software as a service to GE Healthcare, and GE would in fact be interested in that. So this is what had been happening, and um, they repackaged their product or their service, and uh, this way they found a new uh, target market, and um, they not only had the chance to uh, find out about this, but they also got the support of how to repackage it, and they also got the networking opportunity with GE, not only to validate it, but also to make it possible. So now they are at the 
uh, at the last stage of uh, signing the contract and uh, signing the contract and working together. There was a question, I believe. Just an organizational question: Do all uh, all of the teams listening to each other, or no? Yeah, it would be way too much time. Yes, exactly. Oh, sorry, you don't. If all the teams were listening into one another during the last pitch. Yeah, the question is whether all the teams are in the same room and listening to one another. The answer is no. And the reason, because um, it would be boring even for me, this, uh, sitting there listening to the same thing for eight hours. I mean, who can do that? No. What we have to do is uh, divide the group. So we divide it into four groups. All sessions are recorded. So if you are particularly interested in one of the other cohort because, uh, or cohort member, because you think that there is, I don't know, you can learn a lot from your peers, or that you can, you have a possible collaboration in mind, so then you can just rewatch the videos and all the recordings. So then, no. One rule that we have is do not waste my time, or do not waste each, each other's time. So we always um, uh, organize the sessions, uh, to make it very intensive and rather short but intensive. Yes, maybe one more um, important thing to highlight about the experts. So what field um, of expertise we are looking for the most? And then you see it here in the lower table uh, listed, like regulation, data and product management, commercial sales and contracting, and hospital and distribution. So I uh, listed some of the things of uh, what has worked for us so far and what did not work. Um, the first things first, the duration of the program. So as we started in the first two years, the program uh, was six months long, and teams had to fly in each month for four days of intensive, kind of hackathon style training. Uh, which means that a massive part of uh, the funding had to be uh, allocated to um, TNR costs. I mean, you cannot expect teams to fly in with their own costs, so we had to offer it, but then we just said this is just way too much money on TNL. We would uh, rather give them much more value and allocating this uh, budget into something different or something else. And this is actually what we did. So first of all, we decreased the duration of the program into three months. Now it is a much more intensive program. Instead of four days, now we have, um, yeah, instead of three full days, now we have uh, an entire week. But now everything is shifted to be online. Um, working with 19 teams, yes. So <laughs> we started to work with 19 teams. Uh, I do not suggest it to anyone uh, unless you have a big, big, big group that you can work with them. Yeah, Gabor is smiling. Janusz is smiling as well because I think that you're all familiar with that. Uh, you're both working in accelerators and you know how hard it is to provide valuable mentoring to the teams. So when they have very specific questions about um, what do I have to do to meet the requirements uh, of the FDA approval to be able to go to the US market? I mean, that's a whole set of criteria that you must be fully aware of, which requires very, very uh, specific kind of preparation. And um, you cannot just give a two sentence uh, sentences answer to one of the teams. You really have to sit down and talk it through and make a plan and validate it and then after support them further with networking. So then what we found out is that if we decrease the number of teams who we accept and we further focus more on uh, the, de the um, the maturity level of the teams, then we can make a much better cohort um, that is easier to work with and provide mentoring to them. Maturity level of the teams is the next thing. So, as I said, we are both working with early stage teams and 
and with uh, um, growth stage teams. Sorry, I do not have the time. How much time do I have left? Three minutes? Oh no, sorry, okay, I'm gonna speed things up then. Uh, so maturity level of the teams. Um, very briefly, uh, I just gave you this example of uh, doing uh, um, working on a tech app vs um, working on a medical device. So imagine all the regulations that you have to go through. For example, if you have a medical device that you put into a human's heart. So imagine that uh, what you're developing, you need multiple millions of uh, dollars for the validation and to, to, um, to meet all the uh, requirements. And um, by the time that you, ach you achieve any kind of success, maybe six to seven years. So as a startup accelerator, we also have to think about this time frame that healthcare companies are working with. So this is why we divided the batch and we are uh, recruiting both early stage teams and growth stage teams. So then part of the teams are focusing on um, product market fit and getting uh, seed A round, uh, for example, but the others are ready for partnership building. And then we focus on them um, uh, to introduce them to, um, to our partners, for example, with GE, which did happen, in fact. So there are some teams who are now working together with GE and, um, and uh, managed to uh, make a great uh, partnership together. Validation method. So as a startup, um, if I ask you about a question, and most probably what you will say is um, going to be a very optimistic answer because if not fully, but partially, it is going to come from your heart. The problem with validation is that teams cannot really validate themselves. So you ha we have to focus on validation. Uh, and we th I think that after the second year, we found out that um, after three months of time, when we really got to know the teams, it turned out that what they stated, that this is, I don't know, TRL level seven is where we are, it turned out to be only three. It is not because that they lied, but they did not know better. So this is why we focus on validation heavily um, in the last two years. Personalized training, I think that I taught uh, a lot about that, uh, mentoring and one-on-one -on -one consultations and uh, all that. Set measurable goals and KPIs. Uh, this is a tool that we implemented from last year on. So upon uh, joining the program, we asked the teams to list their uh, personal goals and KPIs related to the program. So then we all know uh, what type of uh, support uh, the teams need. Community building, yes. Um, I think it is very important if you are a healthcare startup or if you are any kind of startup to um, find a community uh, from where you can get lots of value out of. Uh, so um, what we are doing here is that we are uh, strengthening this community um, and, um, and uh, providing uh, continuous support to the teams even after the program has ended. So it is... Um, a usual thing that mentor startup relationships last after the program. So some of the mentors are still having weekly uh, mentoring sessions with their teams even after three years. Some of the teams uh, invited the, uh, the mentors to join their advisory board and so on and so forth. To wrap up, um, this is an opportunity for teams but this is up to them how much they make out of it. So if there is a team who, who is not mentorable, let's say it out. There are teams who are not mentorable. If you believe that what you do is the best and you do not accept uh, any kind of feedback, uh, then uh, it means that we cannot help you. So you joining an accelerator program has basically no point. We have to select teams who are uh, participating in the program, being open-minded 
to feedback and mentoring, uh, and that's how we can help them to reach the next stage of their development. What I've been talking about so far is the reactor program um, that we have, this accelerator program right here. But I wanted to show you just one slide about the full pipeline that we cover as HVL. So reactor program is, uh, is mainly uh, suggested for those who already have a working MVP and uh, who already have a working MVP and are incorporated companies. But we want to cover the full pipeline starting from secondary school. So we have a program called Young Talents Program where we work with the top uh, secondary schools in Hungary and it is one of my uh, favorite projects actually. So these little students have the chance to think about uh, a business idea and they're gonna stimulate uh, in the accelerator program that they are doing the validation, prototyping, uh, and, and so on and so forth, speed training and everything else. I think that it is essential to give the opportunity for, um, for uh, high schoolers or for this age to gain entrepreneurial skills that they can use later on. Moving on, Catalyst Europe. If you are um, um, a master's degree student, a PhD student, if you are a researcher within healthcare, this is the program that I would suggest you to choose if you do not have an incorporated team yet. So what Catalyst focuses on is uh, it helps you select the best research area that will guarantee you not only innovation, but commercialization as well. So this is key. The third one is uh, that we have a bunch of uh, education um, programs. Two minutes, great, thank you. Bunch of educational um, programs in our educational portfolio. So for you, for example, I would suggest you to check these out. Programs such as Hello AI or Healthcare Entrepreneurship Nanomasters. If you already have um, an idea in the process, but do not have a team yet, and you would like to validate uh, what you have so far, and you would like to know what are the next steps to make this into a working business, this is what you have to look for. Once you have a working um, startup, a working team, incorporated team, then Reactor is for you. And then we are launching a brand new uh, accelerator program later this week. Uh, th later this year, sorry, uh, focusing on um, intensive care and recovery. So here we are focusing on those teams who want to innovate. Um, let's say, for example, you are going to uh, the Olympics and your team has to make sure that if you break your leg, you are going to get the best support. So what we are doing is that we are working with teams who make sure that um, these athletes receive the best support. Please just have a quick look at our team. I do not have time to introduce everyone one by one, but this is our lovely team that we work with. And now it's time for Q&A, if you have any questions left. Do you have any questions left? Yes. I have a very short question. Um, that you, uh, now that I've seen that you're working with some international teams, are you working in English and internationally within your team as well, or is it like fully uh, Hungarian? Yes, it, yeah, we have, oh my God, Nigerian origins, Croatian, Russian, Hungarian. Yeah, so this is an international team. We do everything in English. Another question. Yeah, so uh, I didn't actually find on your website. Is there any um, financial grant or uh, reward in, in the reactor or investment? Yes, yeah, so one of our partners is Capital Community, which is a MedTech um, fund. Um, and um, we, um, I would say that this is one way that we support the teams to get uh, financial support or investment. But we also have a bunch of investors and VCs in our network that we can direct them to. And also EIT Health is, um, is playing a very important role in that. Are you taking in the, in the no. 
it is an equity free program. Thank you so much for your time. It was lovely to share this little time with you. Hello everyone, nice to have you here on this lovely afternoon. As you can see on the slide, I am Anna, and this is my colleague Gabor, and we are Startup Business Launchpad. And in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about now a really cool and unique tool which can be very helpful to you as you want to conduct some qualitative research. So let's start it. First, I want to have a question. How many of you have seen or heard about the infamous scene that happened between Will Smith and Chris Rock at the Oscar? Oh, almost everyone. Good, good, good. Great. Next question. Are you agreeing with that reaction from Will's side? Just put your hands there. Okay. And the last question is, would you do the same if we were in that situation? Just honestly, okay, got it, thank you, great. So this is good, because I have some data now. I know some of you heard of it, some of don't, and yeah, I know that some of you maybe are agree with that, that's great, but this is just quantified data. I have no idea why you choose that, or maybe you don't answer the question because you don't want to look like a stupid person. I, know, I want to know why do you think what you think, and I want to know what's the process behind these things. So that's why we use qualitative data research. I hope you are familiar with this expression because we're all from the university, so I hope you all know what it means. But um, let's, let's go back from a different, uh, just go back a step. Um, the, um, title of this um, presentation is Startup VIP, which is a Hungarian acronym, so it won't make sense to our foreign guests. But for your convenience, we created an English version for it, which is Validation in Progress. And that's why I want to, wanted to ask these questions, because um, validation is crucial. Validation in market research is crucial to our everyday lives. And to everyone who is in business, or maybe from com coming from the academic perspective. If you want to, if, you, if you're in a business and you have a company and uh, you just want to expand your portfolio and uh, you want to devel uh, yeah, develop a new product, you have to know, is it acceptable by your market? Is it, is it going to be innovative or something like that? Or maybe you are experiencing some underperformance in your current one. So you have to know what is behind the data because you know what is happening, but you have no idea why. Or maybe you're coming from an academic perspective and you want to conduct a study and you need answers to your hypothesis. So you have to go behind the data. You have to know what the research participants think, why they think, how they think. And, qual and surveys are not suitable for this kind of questions because why is not in there. That's why you need qualitative research. And if, you, if we are talking about startups, then validation is key and it's crucial for survival because if you don't know your market, if you don't know your customers, you're just gonna die. So I guess we can agree or agree can that that this is what we need. Everyone needs qualitative data and everyone uses it for different perspectives where we are talking about the same. So. Why, why am I speaking about this? Because if you can see this skeleton behind me, sometimes I feel myself that, okay, we need qualitative data, so let's do some qualitative research. But we must admit, to be honest, that this is a pain in the ass sometimes. Come on, qualitative research. We, I have to conduct deep interviews, focus groups. We need them, but they are very, very costly. We need to put a lot of effort in it. We need to find the perfect um, participants and interview uh, subject. And this is really painful sometimes. But, and okay, and another thing is that these methods were invented in the 1950s and 60s. Really old school, huh? So... 
we can present you something which is more suitable for the 21st century standards and can help you with the very unique and new and disruptive ways. Let's have a look at it. Can we move on? Oh, just sorry for one second. You see a link here, that's a Cutly link here. Yeah? This is here because I want you to open this on your smartphones because I j I'm just going to have you a teaser here and all the deeper information about the methodology, functions, about the software I'm going to show you now. It's in the white paper. So if you want more understanding and deeper understanding about the software, please use the link. Okay, so now let's have a peek on what I'm talking about. Oh, just a second. Everyone is open the document? Okay, let's move on. Okay. Gabor, can we move on? Next slide. No? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay, yeah. So this is ICON or ECON. This is a new and innovative research tool which can help you create and, create and conduct focus groups online. And uh, we are here to help you with these problems I've mentioned before, with these, the pain points with traditional qualitative research methods. Why ICON is different than the traditional ones? Uh, sorry, I need to, <laughs> I need to see my... Uh, Sorry, yeah. So, in comparison with traditional ones, you, you can see on the next slide why is this tool is unique and new and disruptive ones. Can we move on, sorry? Thank you. This tool is going to take us to the digital world. Um, one of the biggest pain points with traditional qualitative research is that you have to go outside. You have to find your participants. You have to spend time with them, and it's really time-consuming and costly. You have to rent, um, you have to rent um, a room with a um, mirror or observer room, which is very costly. You have to find moderators, you have to pay them, you have to pay the in initiatives, sorry. So everything is included. If I remember correctly, one um, focus group now, which is offline, um, is uh, in Hungary, um, and the business standard is one million forint just one focus groups. And if you are conducting qualitative research, you need to add, create and conduct at least four or six focus groups for valid data. So it's absolutely costly. But if you are going digital, you don't have to go outside. You just need to only sit behind your laptop, which is m far worse. <laughs> yes, and it's much com convenient and cost efficient. Um, Yes, this is what I'm talking about. This is suitable for limited time and limited sources. What do I mean about limited time? Limited times mean that a an, an traditional um, qualitative research could take months because, as I mentioned before, you have to um, uh, find your perfect um, subjects. You have to be very precise about your sampling. So. Yes, maybe, and you have to uh, analyze the data before, after the, um, the focus group or the deep interviews. And yeah, if you are alone, it could take months. But with ICON, you can um, conduct pro focus group simultaneously, which means if you have enough moderators, you can conduct, I don't know, four or six focus groups at the same time. And... Uh, all the data exports are instant, actually. So when you close the, the session, you get all the information almost instantly. Mm, I remember, if I remember, remember correctly, we, our fastest, um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, our fastest uh, project with this tool was, I don't know, two days, two working days because we had enough um, subjects and we had enough moderators, so we were able to conduct all the groups in two days. And after that, we spent only two days with the data analyzing, and yeah, uh, after that, we just created the output for the client. And it was very fast, and he was very pleased with that, because it's unique. Um, um, our biggest goal, I think, is that we have 
built-in projective games in the tool because um, if you want to understand your customer and consumer, as I mentioned before, you have to know how they think and what they think. And sometimes these informations are more important than what they type or what they say. And they can be only taken out by unconscious, by these kind of projective games, which ones were invited, I don't know, the 60s or 70s, I don't remember correctly, but these are very useful. These are small games, only take one or two minutes maximum, and they are actually very enjoyable. enjoyable sorry. And uh, these um, <coughs> results came from the, the projective games are um, instantly in your hands. So as I said, it's real time and fast, which is a very adaptive way, to be honest, because uh, as a moderator, or you have a client in the virtual mirror room, you can uh, maybe you can get in the point that, okay, your hypotheses are not correct, or you think that maybe you have failed with the original questions, but now the participants say something that which is very important to you, so you can decide, okay, let's change the whole course of the conversation or our whole research, which is, to be honest, as an offline way, it's impossible. So this is a very big uh, plus for our uh, software. Mm. You can find some um, projective games uh, in, in the white paper. I won't uh, tell you now all the paper, uh, all the uh, information which are inside that. Um, can we go to the next one, please? Okay. So this is the importance why we need these projective games into the icon or any other research tool. Because actually these questions are, are participate with a different level or conscious level with the, with the participant. So this is very useful to the moderators or the clients. Maybe even they don't realize it until yet. Um, can we go to the next one, please? Next one? Yeah. Uh, the last item was on the list that it is based on uh, tested methodology. This is true, actually, because uh, since it was launched, no, I want this piece. Since it was launched in 2007, we have um, <coughs> we had actually more than 8,000 participants and more than 1,000 whole focus groups. So I guess this number is very exciting. Yes, so just summarize our tool in one slide. It's very innovative and very useful for anyone, no matter how is it is business uh, aspect or academic field or for startups because yeah, validation is crucial to everyone so they can use it easily because it's fast and adaptive and intuitive. Uh, I don't want to um, repeat myself. You can find here the, the biggest conclusions here. So we have decided that uh, we can conduct now here a, a focus group because it's fast and it's online and it's browser-based. So if you want to try, you can have your own participant ID and you can take part in it and you can test it if you want to. Please note that uh, this tool is still under development, so some functions are not are truly um, programmed yet. It's a kind of um, pre-beta release, and we need some uh, <coughs> usability testing as well. But if you want to try it, you can have these one of these uh, tokens, and you can go inside. It's browser-based, so you can use Chrome, Opera, Mozilla, anything else if you want to. We have now a moderator inside, which is Gabor. And uh, we have a pre-uploaded guide, which is helpful because we have you can see how it works now, and we can show you anything if you want to. Gabor, can you show us? Just waiting for some seconds. Guys, were you able to join? Yeah, are you able to join? Well, let's, let's wait a few okay. seconds. Until okay, they I'm going to go inside by my phone as well. Okay, we have someone here. Okay. Okay, anyone else? We have two brave persons here.
I see at least four people nodding their heads, so we wait until they are reaching the yep. start line. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, another one, good. We wait one minute. Then after that, we're going to show it online. How is it working? We're going to the switch to the browser one. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we have four guys here. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, let's switch. No more nudging hands, so I can switch to the group itself. Okay. Uh, why don't you see it? Okay. That's interesting. Can we stop presenting that? Oh, good. You can see it now. So this is how Icon looks like now in its current version. Um, on the left, you can see this is the pre-uploaded guide. This is easy for the moderators because you don't have to type anything inside. This is chat based, so you don't this is totally anonymous. You won't see yourself or anyone else in the room. You only have nicknames and avatars, just like in a chat room. Um, yeah, so the pre uploaded guide is very helpful to anyone who wants to uh, rely on it and this is helpful because oh uh, sorry, <laughs> I just forget it. Yeah, it um it's a really cool cool tool for you because um you save time when you just uh, click on it and go to the go, go with that in the <clears throat> in the middle section which is the actual live conversation between the participants uh try to say something okay who is participant 9 hello to you yeah you can find the uh, you can find a small line um under where you can type anything into it it's not the best on smartphones yet, but we are working on the functions. So especially what you can do is that in the left side you see the guide that we prepared for you. Yeah. The topic about uh, this one is about vacation. And what you do, you simply double click on the guideline and it appears in the chat by you. So you don't need to type yourself the question, you just prepare the guide, what you want to ask, and then it's working like any simple, or maybe you are familiar with, chat room, that you will receive the questions within this chat room. So here is the one, welcome into your demo research. I can even select several things to do it once. And that's how we communicate with the participant. At the same time, you have also the possibility to answer. Why is this more reliable than a focus group online in a Zoom meeting. Because here, you are sitting at your home under your preferred session, wherever you want. You can be at the beach, you can be in your house, you can be at the chimney. It's, it's your favorite location, so you're not disturbed, you're at home. You are also not distracted by what others may think about what you write, because you don't see them. So imagine that if you're going to the normal online uh, normal focus group, you are always judged by the present people about what you say, which modifies your opinion during the course of the research. This tool eliminates this kind of disturbing element. It means, you know, that we are talking about that uh, online everybody is free to say what they want. If you go to any Facebook chat or if you go to any other chat, you will face the truth that people are writing what they want. They don't, they don't hold back. Here, it's kind of the same effect. Because it's, it's not verbal, but written, you think about what you want to write. Of course, you see what others are typing. You can interact with them. But basically, we are receiving your true opinion. It's, it's a kind of way to say that 
you know, the next generation, not my generation, but my son and, 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 and the next generation after us, they are used to communicate online. They are used to chat. They are not used to talk like I'm doing here. Uh, so the only way to get their opinion really fast and really in the way is to bring them into an environment which they feel comfortable. This kind of chat room is the solution for it. It's also controllable. It's also dynamic. It doesn't matter how long have you prepared the, the guide. It's not a fixed line, so you can jump on. So you see, if I want to start with, I don't know, uh, I'm starting to ask you questions. I'm simply double clicking on it. If I'm able to click double. Uh, and it appears here. If during the conversation, because I, it's live, so I'm, I see what you write, you type, there is a slight, let's say, detour to how I imagine the guide, I can simply interact it. Yeah, hello everyone, hello Andrea. I can simply interact it and write a different question. So I'm not forced to use which is preset up into the guide. I can modify it on the fly. And that's where the experience of a research expert came to the mind, because here you're not simply a robot clicking, double clicking on different lines, but you can formulate your own questions. There is also a lot of three. Can you show the projective games, one of them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, yes. is a quite uh, well. That's, that's, that's how it works. It's really rare that you can get some people just to join this group and without having yeah. incentive. Of course, there are startups who might achieve this kind of situation. Yeah. Um, but normally, if you are talking about the business research, this is always coming with incentives. Yeah. So, what is really, really good? So here are the questions. I'm just jumping over. Uh, down. Scroll down. Ah, oh, okay. That's the yeah. first one. So there is a lot of question coming up. For example, we are sending in the game. Normally, if you are clicking on that, there's a new video in. It's opening. Did it pop up on your smartphone? Okay, good. Where is it? Okay. Yeah, so that's the beauty of having a pre-release beta version, which is not always functioning as you would like to function. Yeah. Yeah, so some of you... Okay, let's see. Is it done? Oh, and we can see everything you type there, because b below your avatar we can see a green um, scrolling. So we can see when you are typing, or when you delete it. You see that? Which one is which one is yours? Can you go back to the conversation please? Edward, which one is yours? Can you show the pictures? So this is the, the admin administrator mode, so yeah. I see This is the summed up as you see can. Yeah. This is all the participant answers. We cannot say which one is yours or not yours because it's summed up. But you can go to the detail list. Can you go back to the go to the detail list? Yeah. Okay. Can you go back to the conversation? Okay. Can you show another one? Yeah. The pairing? No no no. There's another game.
Yeah, we, we can see uh, where are you in the, are you finished with the game because uh, there's this uh, yellow um, button below your avatar, so you, we can uh, observe where are you in the process. When it turns to green, it means you've completed the game, and, and when it turns to red, it means you just close the window, and we have to resend it to you again. So everything is monitored during the conversation from the participants, because everything contains information, valid information to the moderator and to the client as well. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. So this is from the background, from the administration side. Yeah. And all the data is collecting real time. Yeah. And, and then you can go on. And you can switch back to, you can run several games. So in fact, it's not only a non-verbal communication where you have questions and you need to answer. We are specifically designing guides where you're interrupted during your typing and you need to focus on to solving these games. These games give us researchers responsive about your intuitiveness, about your consciousness, and it adds only to the typical written data. Normally, you can do that. You can't do that if you are on an offline focus group, because the offline focus group does not have the possibility to take out or pick one or two participants and have such research done by them. So this is a combination of both the old traditional good experiences about focus groups. It's adding a touch of the 21st century digitalization. and. We have also the possibility to offer, if you have uh, a company for you who are doing your, the research, you can offer them the mirror view, so it's a multi-view. So they can come into the research, they cannot interact with the people taking participation in that, but they can have a sneak intro of what's happening. Also you have a moderator role, also you have an administrator role, and these ro all these roles have different views, and everything is packed together in one browser. The browser is a kind of uh, uh, mirror for us, but back in the back, this is running on a robust server application. So this is not a not a simple app like that. It's just connected, so it's a it's a, the, the browser is a tool for you to to get connected. Yeah. Okay. How much time we have left? None. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Okay. Definitely none. So we don't want to bore you with the technical information and, and every functions with, uh, with the program. If you are interested, you can find us. Um, um, we can, you can send us an email and then we can get touch, in touch with us. So thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. And of course, if you have some questions right now, we are ready to answer it. Or if you prefer to talk with us personally, then you can join us with a coffee. Yep. Okay, thank you very much.